All right, so I want to cover... How do I even start this, dude? Uh... All right, so I wanted to cover my favorite weapons in Splatoon 2 and what changes I want to see to them in Splatoon 3, as well as what I want to see from their weapon kits. So I'm going to start this off with Range Blaster. We will be talking about Dynamo, x Blaster, Octobrush, uh, Brella, and Rapid Blaster. Some with more changes than others. So Range Blaster's up first, and I'll just go real quick with this because I've stated these before, which is removing RNG in the air, the damage increase, and a nerf with the blast radius decrease, I think is fair. That's the only real sort of new thing. So the blast radius size would make it match rapid and normal blaster. Pretty simple because we're giving it no jump RNG, which is a pretty significant buff. The damage radius increase is basically so two indirects will reliably kill, even if you heal a little bit because it'll do a total of 110 damage minimum instead of 100. That's it. Range blaster is honestly a really simple weapon to buff. Because Range Blaster only really does, like, one set thing. Like, it can kind of poke people and stuff. And it has, like, distance. Like, it has a variety of strengths. But the main thing about Range is that it's a Slayer. It doesn't really do a whole different type of roles. And as such, I think its kits are also really simple. So we'll get into... Sometimes for kits, we're going to get into a supportive and aggressive kits I want. But in the case of Range Blaster, we're actually going to be talking about what subs and specials I want for an aggressive kit to work. One more up will be good. There we go. Okay, so as such, the kits for Range Blaster are entirely aggressive. So, subs needs to be one thing, a combo sub. People get on this all the time, but Blasters really need combo subs, especially the more aggressive ones. Supportive ones can get away with more utility subs like curling a little bit easier. But they really need aggressive subs. Torpedo would be great for combo potential with the 35 damage hitbox. It would still be very committal with how ink-hungry uh, Range Blaster is. Splat Bomb. Great, we got my dog. You good? Anyway. Uh, Splat Bomb would be good for damaging walls. It would still be a combo sub, though not as good as Torpedo since it only does 30 damage. But it would still be somewhat useful. You would just have to hit with the middle of the blast radius and the bomb would have to explode and still hit someone but it could be more useful if you're fighting something like a splash wall or maybe trying to break a big bubbler in s3 so a spot bomb could be really useful for that and then finally there is burst bomb which is a sub i least really want on it because i think it's just torpedo but less committal i'm okay with burst bomb it's still nice for its mobility but i think a better range blaster does not need a burst bomb like burst bomb is great for this range because this range really needs help but i think more committal and risky subs like torpedo and splat bomb are better designed for it if we get into the case of range as an actual good weapon and specials are aggressive specials pretty simple you want to be able to like get a kill and then use your special to help continue the streak very similar to nautilus with inkjet Zipcaster would be the main one, because Zipcaster enables the main weapons, so the Range Blaster would still have all the main weaknesses and potential strengths it normally does, and that's why I really like the idea of Zipcaster on it. It has a one-shot, so it's still pretty good with it, and it's aggressive. It likes Zipcaster. If they want, they can do stuff like Trizuka or other aggressive specials if they bring back Ultra Stamp, if they bring back Inkjet, I guess Crab Tank could work, stuff like that. I would prefer Zipcaster far above anything else, but I think... Uh, outside of that, it would still work fine. And I guess to wrap this up, like, common things are you're not changing the ink efficiency. Like, nine shots only with over a second of waiting frames. And yeah, I think some nerfs from S1 are absolutely fair. Having the weapon with more downtime for the strengths it has is reasonable, and more ink efficiency is reasonable. Range Blaster should have been much more ink-hungry than it actually was. So I think only having nine shots and having the high waiting frames adds a bit more to the risk-reward nature of the weapon, and considering now we're making its strengths actually good, it should have more weaknesses. That was basically what they did in S1-2 to that was bad, which is they made a range blaster have no strengths, and, no, and they increased its weaknesses. It was fine for range to have strengths, the problem is QR absolutely broke it, invincibility is broke it, but those were removed. But I'm fine with them giving it more weaknesses to compensate for those large amount of strengths. But you can't also take away those strengths. 
So we're giving it its strengths back, and we're keeping the new weaknesses they added because of it. All right. Oh, boy. Dynamo. We got a lot. Oh. I don't want to give it away. How do I? All right. Dynamo Roller. So, is it lagging? Oh, it's only for you. Okay, sorry. All right, Dynamo Roller. So, I'm going to be honest. This could be, like, half the video. Dynamo is so complicated to fix. Because, like with Range Blaster, they kind of removed its strengths from S1 to S2. But on top of that, Dynamo has two flicks and a roll. is a much more versatile weapon. And I think they actually gave some buffs to Dynamo that were bad ideas. So there's a lot to fix with this weapon more than arguably almost any other weapon in the game. I want to see a ton of adjustments too. So let's start with the simple bug fixes. Oop, that's too much. Oh, that's too little. Hello? Don't scroll that much. Okay, whatever. I guess we're going to... I like do that a tiny bit. Okay, so let's start with the basic stuff. Roller bump removed. Basically, this is a thing with all rollers, and this can be fixed for all rollers, where if you hit them with the roller itself, at times it will just knock you backward or forward. Same for the opponent. It's like this weird knockback thing. Rollers, all four of them, are supposed to be rewarded for getting in close, so I have no idea why it's a thing. So get rid of that. Horizontal flick now paints consistently towards the highest quantity. So basically... Dynamo's horizontal flick was made incredibly inconsistent in this game. Sometimes it paints really well, and other times it paints terribly. So what we're going to do is a pretty drastic change, which is we're going to make it always paint well. Always. So it's always going to paint toward that higher quantity. We're getting rid of that inconsistency because it doesn't need to be there. On the topic of drastic buffs, we are increasing the one-hit KO range of both flicks. Now, 2.25, or the Dynamo Horizontal Flick one, may seem drastic, but it's actually less in this game than it was in 1. In fact, it's about the same range as a Splash. So this will give it slightly more range over short-range shooters, which is what it should be considering how slow it is. Vertical Flick will be three lines. It'll be matching closer to mid-range shooters. This is basically making the Flick range where it should be. It's just a little bit too low, it's a pretty big deal, I think, for more aggressive plays. And I think it's just a little bit too unreasonable. And that's not the best buff. We've done a lot. That's not the best one. The best one is vertical flick minimum damage from 40 to 55. 55 instead of 50 for the same reason of range blaster. Because the vertical flick takes 61 frames before the hitbox comes out. 80 frames if you count the end lag. And right now, Vertical Flick does not do anything well. Like, it has a little bit more range. It has a bit extra painting range, but it's not good at that. They made Flings' Vertical Flick good for painting because it doesn't use as much ink. You can stray fast with it, and it paints better, like, to the sides. So outside of a bit extra painting range in some situations, it doesn't really do anything on Dynamo. And the 40 hit that it does is also near useless. Like, it barely reaches around Hydra range, and it takes three flicks to kill. Whereas something like Explo can kill in three indirects, and it's faster. Indirect hits at around the same range. So 55 would be more fair. It would still be really hard to kill someone with max range vertical flicks. It would still be very rare, but I think it would be fair. So that's part one of fixing Dynamo. We have now given it its strengths back. The vertical flick is now decent at poking out long-range weapons. It will not beat backlines, but you can poke it if you have teammates coordinating it with you. It now paints effectively, and it now has more reliable killing with its actual kill range. So the horizontal and vertical flicks now both work. So before we get to the next part, to explain with this, this is now... Okay, so before I get to what we're doing next, because I know some people are going to be upset at this, now that we have given Dynamo its strengths back that it should have never lost, 
We're gonna give it its weaknesses back that it toned down for no reason. We're going to nerf Dynamo's horizontal flick to 24% of the ink tank and vertical to 20, which is the same ink efficiency that Dynamo was in the first game. This means you now only have four horizontal flicks. You now only have four horizontal flicks and five vertical flicks on a full ink tank. Vertical flicks will use 100%, so you cannot roll after five verticals. You get a little bit of a roll after four horizontal. I firmly believe that this right here is the change that should have happened between games. And they even did it in Salmon Run. Dynamo is a four flick in Salmon Run where it doesn't make sense. This is what it should have had. So Dynamo with the changes we did now has incredibly threatening flicks. And it doesn't outpaint everything like it did in S1. In S1, Dynamo had painted everything, but it can match or do a little bit better than most weapons. It's now a really threatening painting tool. So to keep it from being broken, it only can paint for a little bit at a time. That's what it should be. Really overwhelming, threatening paint, but you can only do it for a little bit. Ink efficiency is an actual skill that has been thrown out the window into with LDE nerfs and all this other stuff with shooters being meta, and I'm tired of it. Dynamo is an ink-hungry weapon. They made its ink efficiency stack better with Ink Save Remain, and they made it 18% for both flicks. That is not the right changes. I don't like either of those. I'm okay with the Ink Save Remain curve now, because I'm making it 4 flicks instead of 5. Yes, this makes Dynamo threatening with more downtime. Now, why 24 instead of 25%? Because I've thought about this. Curves. So originally I brought this up at the Dynamo server... And I had people tell me that 25% was a bit too much. I had talked with someone in the server, uh, Ayata, and they were very helpful to make these EXL charts. So it was really, really nice. So with these charts, basically the horizontal flick, if you want to run main saver, you can run a main of main saver and you will have five flicks. And around a pure for six flicks. A pure of ink saver main will give you six flicks or 2.4, something like that. Two point, sorry. If you want seven flicks, it's 2.4. That's the new main saver numbers. And my thing is connected. Hello? Okay, cool. Replug it. Okay, well, now my chat's gone. Or not gone, but I guess Spectrum just went out. That's why I'm on the alternate connection. Oh, it's back. Okay. Ooh. Hold up. I want chat back. Give me one second. Hold on. I got a message I want to check first in case I missed something. Okay, so basically what this does, here's the horizontal flick at 24%. So around a main will give you five flicks, two mains will give you six flicks, and three mains and one sub, or two mains and four subs, will give you seven flicks. So if you want to have six or seven flicks, rather than needing to run a sub or five, or rather than needing to run literally one sub or a main of Ink Saver main only, it now actually is going to take some of your gear, which is really fair considering you no longer need main power up. For the vertical flick, around two mains will also give you seven vertical flicks, and you don't even need a full main to get six verticals. So around a pure would probably be most optimal for giving you six horizontal and seven vertical flicks. So of course you would experiment because you want like a certain amount of horizontal plus vertical, whatever. Again, thank you for helping me with the charts and the Microsoft Excel. They made those, so I appreciate it. But yeah, that is a big issue with patch design and something I don't like and want to change. It's how do we buff and nerf things? And I feel like with glass cannon weapons, Nintendo has gone to reduce the weaknesses but take away the strength, and it should be the opposite. 
You don't touch the strength unless you absolutely have to. You up the weaknesses. 99% of the time, that's how you adjust glass cannons. So we have up the weaknesses, and that, in my opinion, would make Dynamo a much better weapon, while also maintaining its glass cannon nature and not making it too overpowered. It can still be rushed down because it's slow, it still can't paint for super long, and it still has a hard time dealing with displacement. Oh, I can't even scroll this up anymore. <laughs> I'm running out of space because I'm at the top. I'll have to scroll down. I think it's... Okay. So finally, little bonus. They can increase the rolling damage if they want to. These two changes here are absolutely not needed. I'm going to be 110% honest. I just think they would be funny. Like uh, max damage roller things. I went over it in my experimental Splatoon 3 changes. I still really like this idea, especially for Dynamo. So I'm going to listen here. Side note on MPU. I forgot to rearrange blasters. Oh, well. It, it's there. You can see it. <laughs> If MPU returns, there should be no main power of damage up. Make it something really small so people don't really run it or only run it in low quantities. I think I think Dynamo should be ink hungry via ink saver main, and if you want like swim speed, stealth jump, quick respawn, etc. There's a lot of different things. I do not think it should need damage up to be functioning. So I don't really like main power up as damage up in the first place, and that's a good way to get rid of it. Okay, now we can finally talk about kits. Alright, so, no cancelable flicks? Nah, not this time. That was an extreme idea if you want to do minimal dynamo changes, like if you didn't want to do the kill box and stuff. Ideally, I kind of want dynamo to still feel the exact same. So, for me personally, this is what I would prefer they do. Alright, aggressive kit, burst bomb, and a transformation special. So let me get this clear. There are two types of aggressive specials. There are enablers and transformers. Transformers is stuff we've seen a ton. It's like Zooka, Crab Tank, Inkjet, Ultra Stamp, Kraken, etc. Basically, screw whatever main and sub weapon you're playing. Oh, no, with Zooka, you get the sub weapon. Basically, screw your main weapon. You now get this super weapon, and you get to be aggressive with it. I do not think that would work well with Dynamo much at all. Or sorry, I think that will work with Dynamo. I do not think it could get something like Zipcaster, which is an enabler, because I think it's way too slow. So I don't really want it to get like a Zipcaster type special. If it needs an aggressive kit, it should be Transformation. And Burst Bomb should be the sub. Burst Bomb would not be super broken. It would be okay for combos, but you still have to do that long flick. Mainly Burst Bomb would be useful for painting your feet and moving around. And because we've made Dynamo really ink hungry in this version... I think it would be completely fair, because Burst Bombs use 40%, your Horizontal uses 24 you would need Savers to really use it a lot. So it would still come with a lot of risk, which is what it should be. Supportive Kit. I really want... Beacon or Sprinkler. This is the only weapon I want Sprinkler on, because Sprinkler is nice to help it with its paint, but it also could do a similar thing to Burst Bomb. Nowhere near as well, but you still can use it to paint your feet, and it would be a bit more costly. However, I think a Beacon could be really cool, and in both Splatoon 1 and 2, we do not have enough Beacon mid to long range weapons. We need more of them, because Beacons are so underrated, but they just can't be used, because they're on so many weak options. And then a supportive special would be like Killer Whale 5.1, most likely, or any kind of distance help. Basically something you can use, and it would help your team from a safe distance. Maybe something like a Bomb Rush 2.0, or something like that. But even then, I would really go with more a deployable, I think, would fit Dynamo better. I think Echo and S1 was perfect. I already kind of like Booyah Bomb on K-Dynamo. Like, honestly, you can kind of copy K-Dynamo's kit, because Booyah is really nice as a supportive special, you don't want to panic it because your weapon's way too slow for that. 
but you want to use it to deal with other specials. And I think that fits Dynamo very well. I really like the Kensa Dynamo kit in S2. So if they just brought that kit to 3, I think it would be fine. We have gone through Dynamo's giant ass patch changes. All right. Rapid. I only have one change for Rapid. That's it. I think Rapid is pretty fine right now, which is medium to light class, giving it a little bit extra swim and run speed. This will give you a little bit more gear freedom. And Rapid generally really relies on spacing, so I think making that easier would be fair. That's literally it. I think the main weapon is fine. Out of all the weapons I use, I think this one doesn't really need anything. This is just a little quality of life thing that it probably should have. What I do care about in terms of rap... Oh, it's still off. Just like... Why make a noise? It's off. What I do think Rapid should have is a goddamn proper aggressive kit. And this is the reason I'm probably not going to play Rapid very much in F3 and mostly play range. Despite the fact that... Besides the fact that I like range better, because I think Rapid with supportive kits are boring. It should still get a supportive kit, and we'll get to that. But aggressive kits. Torpedo is literally perfect. Burst Bomb does not cost enough because the main weapon isn't that incongruity. Torpedo is perfect. Ship damage at a cost. Helpful for mobility by painting your feet. Risky option to get a one-shot kill. Torpedo for this weapon is perfect. Please keep it. Aggressive-wise, like with Dynamo, I don't think it fits super well with something like Zipcaster, so I would like a transformation special. Maybe Crab Tank, though that could be kind of similar to the main weapon, and, well, Clash kind of already has it from what we've seen. So I think something like Trizuka would work really well, because Torpedo can paint your feet. So Torpedo Trizuka could work out very well, so you could use Torp to paint your feet for a Zuka shot, kind of like a more costly burst bomb there. That's what I would want to see on it. Supportive kit. I want another beacon weapon. Give me beacon. Beacon is really cool. Beacon would give it a really nice option. This would still be hard for Rapid because it doesn't have a combo sub, but I still think beacon is good enough for it to work. Ideally, for a supportive special, it would need to be one that paints or assists with chip damage. Ideally, more on the paint side. So something like a revamped bomb rush with like multiple bombs or something would work great for it. So I guess this is kind of close to V Rapid's kit, but beacon much better than mine. Mine is kind of weird on it, but it's not bad. So I think this would work very well for a supportive kit. You would still have to build a team comp around it because of the Crapid, or sorry. You would, still have to, you would still have to build a team comp around it because the Rapid can't do too much by itself because it has beacon. But I think that's fine as long as the special can sort of help it. Brella. Oh, too hard. All right, Brella. So, a lot of people are going to expect me to go back on the damage nerf it received. Basically, the whole point of the damage nerf is to change pellet breakpoints. So, seven pellets doesn't kill. Before the patch, seven pellets would kill, which would make it really easy to combo. They changed that. So, now, Brella requires eight pellets to kill. And I am fine with that change. I think the aim was a little bit janky. And sometimes you would be able to two-shot people without hitting super close. However, I think it's a little bit toned down. So first, we're going to increase... Let me move this up, actually. Yeah. So first, we'll increase the damage to 16.4. This is the maximum it can be without breaking pellet breakpoints. So this makes it slightly better, slightly better versus objects, whatever. Secondly... The time before damage starts decreasing increased from 8 to 10 frames. Basically, after the pellets travel in the air for a certain amount of time, they start to lose their damage. And now, it would take a tiny bit longer before they lost their damage, which would make max range shots, like shooting Brella shots at like a splash distance, more reliable. So we have barely touched the damage that much, but we've made it a bit more reliable. If you have good aim, 
this will two shot more often or three shot more often. It's a little bit better and I think this is fair for Brella's damage. Again, I am fine with the breakpoints being changed. I think that is a good idea. But I think you have to make it a lot more consistent if you're going to lower the damage. So this will give it more consistent, but still lower damage than pre-patch. And I think that is fair. Finally, the amount of shots on a full tank will be increased from 15 to 18. So Brella's shield uses a ton of your ink tank. About 15% per second. It's a ton. And I think that's fair. What I don't think is fair is the pathetic amount of shots you get with the main weapon. You used to get around 20, and now you have 15. And I think Brella can't really fight in paint battles because it doesn't paint as well as other options. It has a really high points for special, and it's really ink hungry. One of those things has to go. And the main thing, by a mile, would be its ink efficiency. So it still gets outpainted, but it can kind of contest things a bit longer. And it still takes longer to get your special, but it'll be a little bit easier with the ink tank. I think 200p is fine for it. I think it should be there. So that's the kind of changes I'd want to do. Small, but I think this makes Brella feel a lot more consistent, which is a big problem with the weapon right now, and takes away some of the nerfs that I feel were a bit unreasonable. Mainly that ink efficiency I really don't think should be this bad on the normal shots. Gotta line it up perfectly, it's hard. What? Oh, too old. Oh, it's still too high. It's gotta be perfect. Sorry, I'm a perfectionist here. And now I'm kind of giving it away, but it's for the video. Okay, there we go. Octobrush. The brush itself is a hitbox that does an extra 15 damage. By the time this video goes live, there will be a video on my channel about weapon reworks and why I hate what they did to Octobrush. So if you're very curious about why exactly I'm giving it a two-shot, you can go check out that video. Sorry, people on my Twitch, you, you kind of get left behind here, but it's coming Saturday, so you'll see it in a little bit. Roll speed increased from 1.68 to 1.7 units per frame. We're making the roll slightly faster. And then to compensate for these changes, we will decrease the max range by 3%. This makes Octobrush a harder weapon at lower levels of play, but a weapon that has a ton more potential at higher levels. Octobrush is way too accessible. I think it's too easy at lower levels and it needs to be adjusted. But mainly, I want Octobrush to have actual strengths. Like with a lot of the S1 top tiers, they kind of just took it away. And the two-shot is what made it special. You have to get very close to two-shot with these changes. The brush itself has to hit the opponent. So you have to be within, like, one line. Rollers will be better at quick kills. But that kind of gives it a niche that rewards getting up close, which is what it should be. And then rolling just being a little bit faster because a lot of things in two have less end lag or less startup. So making the roll a teeny bit faster, I think, would also be good to add to it. The main thing for Octobrush, though, is kits, and I think it should have an aggressive kit, but there's a bit more versatility than Blasters because it can paint fine for itself, and it has some mobility. Subs. Every Octobrush, plan Every Octobrush main on the planet wants Burst Bomb on their weapon, and I agree. I think it might be a little bit more drastic with Burst Bomb and have... I think Burst Bomb could be a little bit too drastic with the increased damage, doing 55 potentially in one flick. But even then, you would have to be so close to people for that that I think it's fair. And I mean, Try can combo with that, and Try also can outrange like Splash and stuff. So I don't think it's that crazy, to be honest. You would still have to hit a direct Burst Bomb, because a medium direct would not do enough. Alternate options are Fizzy and Curling Bomb. If you want to go the Enhanced Mobility route, then those are the two subs you can do. I think Spot Bomb is okay, but I'm trying to keep to three max, so those are the two I would pick alongside it. 
Fizzy would obviously be a bit better at curling in most situations because you can use it as a poking or combo bomb. But curling would be a lot better for that instant burst of mobility. So I think both would work very well in it. Special would be Crab Tank or Trizuka. I think Zipcaster would work fine. Really any aggressive special would. And Zipcaster could be useful for getting in certain positions. But realistically, I kind of want a transformation special that can help deal with longer range. Crab Tank would be my personal favorite. But if it gets Burst Bomb, obviously give it Trizuka. But... Crab Tank could be really useful for a transformation special. You could use the ball's roll form to force yourself into positions. Basically what you did with Kraken and S1, and I think that would be a very nice parallel. But it would also be useful for just poking things at a distance. And we got one, one weapon left. The Weird Explo Reputation. Alright, so Explosher. A lot of people think this weapon is bad, and it's absolutely not. The problem with it, though, is that it's a very good zones weapon, an okay clan blitz weapon, and a very bad to mediocre tower control and rainmaker weapon. I don't think it's that bad, but I'm in the minority for that opinion. So, the main weapon changes will be incredibly small. There will be a reduction on the max paint drop-off. Basically, if you slosh on high surfaces and slosh far away, you paint less. We're making this a tiny bit less, and we're making it so the paint drop-off also applies on flat ground. And that's because the paint drop-off is supposed to fix paint spam. But it doesn't on some maps like Camp Triggerfish, where you could just slosh on low ground. And while part of that is map design, I can guarantee there will be maps where you can still stall objective from behind a wall in some places. So the paint drop-off will still apply at lower areas if you slosh far away from yourself, but only half as much. So it would be tiny, but this would nerf it a little bit in zones. And the reason we're nerfing it a little bit in zones is because we're going to give it actual weapon kits. Because that's part of why Explo is bad in other modes, because it has useless sub and the only heavy baller in the game, or it has decent utility with Sprinkler, and then Bubble Blower, which is not great for it. I hate it. The main kit for it would be a supportive one. Yes, I want another Beacon weapon. We've listed Beacon a ton, and Beacon, in both games, has too much goddamn missed potential on midline and backline weapons. So we're given another Beacon weapon. Supportive would be a team-based special, and there's a catch to this. And there's a reason I picked Peek in, instead of Sprinkler, even though Sprinkler was fine for it. I don't want it to get a painting sub and special. I want it to get more damage-based stuff, or assist-based stuff. Because I think x Flusher's paint is already one of the most ridiculous paint outputs in the entire game, especially at its range. I think it's so drastic that giving it stuff like a Bomb Rush... Or even maybe something like a Booyah Bomb, though that might not be as bad, could be too much. So I want it to be stuff like Whale 5.1 would work, because it does damage. It should not assist it in its paint. Aggressive Kit, like I stated before quite a few times, would have to be something that is a transformation special. It cannot be like... It cannot be a zip caster because it'll zip cast in and it won't be able to be aggressive. So if you want to give it an aggressive kit, it would have to be something like a transformation special. I'm not really too sure how well an aggro explo could work out. I would just like them to try an aggro explo kit. And that's just personally my idea. All right, that's the full list. And I think I've also decided what I'm going to do with uh, this video, which is... I'm actually just going to talk about range and dynamo and how S1 top tiers were improperly nerfed for the main channel. But I'm going to leave this as a second channel video to go over my personal hopes. So that's all my thoughts. If you guys have any questions, you can drop it and I'll save it in the video. What about Trizuka? I think the main weapon already has a distance, so I don't see the idea of giving it a Zuka. Like, it already pokes at long distances, so I think it should more have something for shorter range.
Uh, might be because you're already subbed. Opinion on machine. Uh, I think it's fine. Do you mean changes on machine I want? I would really just wanted it to have, like, one extra slosh. And maybe a bit better direct damage, but I don't know about that. Just, like, give it an extra slosh. That's all I think it needs. Machine is already good, and it has splashdown. So, I mean, yeah, it'll probably be fine. <laughs> You think they'll give Machine Fizzy again? I hope so. Are you gonna play Splatoon 3 on release date? No. Nah, man. I'm actually gonna keep playing Splatoon 2. You know, I like Splatoon 2 so much better. What about Big Bubbler on Explo? How are you gonna use it to help your team? You're gonna be so far back. You have to be really aggressive to use it. Which I guess could work out fine, but I don't think it has great synergy. Uh, Ballpoint was nerfed too much. Ballpoint was just nerfed way too much. Great, I know what I'm script recording after this. Thoughts on Sploosh? It's fun. Uh, I talked about the changes I wanted to see for my main weapons. It's already done. It's going to be a second channel video, and there'll be a main channel video about basically dynamo and range changes. And, like, how my, my issues with Splatsy's balance changes. So, yeah. Alright, I'm going to end the recording up here, so...